Well, hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and we are here. Oh, we are here. Are we not? Are we not? We are. We are here in uh, the Gold Coast. New scenery for everybody. Uh, new scenery for a lot of people. Apparently, when you can't finish up front, but. Back, back to the ghost. They're chirping quiet now. You know, I mean, oh my. I, I, do we go right into insulting in this? I, I really don't want to go into the insults. I wanted to make a bigger point here today. Um, Obviously, we just got through flying over from Perth to the Gold Coast. We were going to go to Toowoomba. Going to go to Toowoomba. They rained out. Sydney International Speedway had their test session uh, that they had going on there this last week uh, or over or, Last night here, it's a Sunday here in Australia, 2 in the afternoon. I know for some of y'all in the States, that's definitely not the case. But uh, looking here at these little pictures we got here, hold on. There were some pictures that were taken of the track. Steve Conn and a bunch of people over there doing some things. You had some pictures by uh, Zach. Uh, you got you got cars going around the speedway there in Sydney. And, and I heard from a bunch of people that the attitude and the, and the racing, uh, this is ZP Images. The attitude and the racing around the track, even though it was locked down, hooked up, like everybody is very, uh, you know, feeling the momentum that the track is a lot better racing wise than anything. Obviously, still some people out there doubting with the managements and all this stuff, but maybe there'll be some good uh, stuff come here very soon to change the minds of individuals. Of course, Sprint Car Hub, who was kind of, you know, had his little video. He was on, on site. Apparently, he was very happy to. Apparently on Sprint Car Hub's YouTube channel, you're going to be seeing some kind of new big update about the whole entire experience there at Sydney that he got to uh, see yesterday. So stay tuned to all this stuff over there with Sprint Car Hub as far as uh, updates with Sydney International Speedway are concerned. But what did we have happen here tonight? Let's just get into the nitty damn gritty. You had Jacob Allen drive back around. Uh, Justin Peck battle with Tyler Courtney. Uh, a couple of things I, t- I took away from this whole entire uh, situation here with 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 with, uh, with Jacob Allen and even Justin Peck, for instance, um, we we had a situation where they had that Durst dice roll and they thought they would fix it with the guy rolling a damn dice and whether if he you know the fan who rolls the deal and, and gets the number. It's randomly picked, and if that driver wins, they split, you know, a certain number, four for 4,000 or whatever, like it was tonight. And that would make the fans get more interactive and more excited about this damn Durst dice roll, you know, because the drivers really weren't, didn't give a damn. And, you know, they had to switch this thing like seven different times to even get it to work properly. And we get this damn fan out there to uh, roll the dice, and he's like, okay, yeah, sure. You, you'd think this guy would be excited. It was so damn boring. And this is when, you know, you get these complaints about the broadcast boy being boring and this, that, and the other. By the way, Mike Marlar just picked up the win. Great start for them in the Skyline Motorsports team. They're still watching it in the background. So uh, that seems to be a fast combination there in the late mile world. But back to the point, I don't know if it was late mile fans who were, which, once again, I think that the majority of the fans here are here for the late miles. It is Georgia. Uh, hopefully they made some sprint car fans like they kept trying to say they were doing. And then even though the broadcast was acting like there was no sprint car people watching uh, a late model Lucas Oil race. It was just kind of weird. Like, what do you say to new people? But there's just so many things to dissect there. I- I'm just saying, it seems like the broadcast that some people see as a little lackluster so far with high limit. I mean, they're doing all they can. They had a damn fan on the damn front straightaway, literally going to just give some random guy $2,000 or have a chance to win thousands of dollars at the racetrack, and he just didn't care. I mean, the some bitch rolls a four, and he gets Justin Peck, and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, like, no care at all that he could win $2,000. Meanwhile, they're probably over there buying 50-50 tickets, trying to win. Losing their mind. Get the tickets out. Oh, my God. Like, I was just so blown away when that fan that they had do that Durst Dice roll just didn't care if he could have randomly, halfway easily, Won $2,000. I just couldn't believe it. And then you had Justin Peck go up in there and battle for the lead. And, and you know, I kind of wanted Karma to get that fan's ass. Luckily, that fan got to experience, oh, I might win two grand. Well, he might have woke up and figured out what was happening and who his guy was. 
And then it, eventually he still lost because Jacob Pallet or uh well because Jacob Pallet came up there and drove back around him. Uh and Justin Peck made a mistake at three and four. But um regardless, I I, I don't know if we could blame Flo and people for not making the broadcast too exciting when you got Alex down there and everybody's trying as hard as they can. Yeah, maybe there's some external resources that they could do to make it better. You know, we're going to talk about that just a little bit. But at the same time, we, you can't, I, I don't understand how a fan could not be happy about potentially winning $2,000 for no reason other than happenstance luckiness and watching the race. And he, it was like he didn't even care. It was so sad, so sad. But anyway, I got to move on from that. I just couldn't believe what I was watching when I saw that. Regardless, you know, Back to the race, which Jacob Allen did an amazing job. I don't know who watched this race. Uh, Jacob Allen got out front early, moved around on the racetrack a little bit. Justin Peck snuck underneath him. Jacob Allen didn't give up, started blasting one and two, kind of blasting the middle, rolling the center of three and four, and then switched lines at the perfect time because it was starting to slightly rubber up on the bottom exiting four, center to exit of four for sure, um, and got back around. Justin Peck, and was able to hold off Courtney, and, and Courtney was coming very strong car there, obviously. Um, But this, this when I was watching this race, I started thinking about a conversation I had earlier today or this morning or late last night for me because we just, you know, was, was it, it, the time changes are so crazy. And I was talking with a very important entity in the motorsports world, and we were talking about High Limit and the Outlaws and how, you know, people are complaining that the Outlaws can't go run these High Limit races and stuff. And I go, well, it's because they don't need to. There's no there's no real true mar marquee events that the Outlaws or anything need to attend. And we could talk about the flex schedule with High Limit, but the only reason the High Limit Racing Series is off on these weeks at a time it's for the Houston Tide Bank Nationals, for the Knoxville Nationals, for the Kings Royal, for the Williams Grove National Open. These are marquee outlaw events where High Limit needs to be there to kind of showcase how good they potentially are. You know, we saw Brad Sweet and Tyler Courtney really doing some damage against the outlaws at Volusion. It really brought some validity to the contingency of their roster that they have with High Limit. And so... If you're high limit, you have nothing to lose and all to gain when you when you have this kind of run whatever you want and go wherever you want. I mean, especially when it's marquee events like Knoxville, Houston's High Banks, the big paying events, the Kings Royals, the, the National Opens. What high limit race can you name me that even is in the same category that outlaw drivers need to go and attend to race? What? What, what weeks do you want them to take? Maybe the Tuscarora? Maybe? I mean, maybe the the uh, Gold Cup, maybe Skagit, the, the three races, maybe are these in the marquee level? The closest thing would be, in my opinion, the closest thing in the marquee department would be Tuscarora. Obviously, Gold Cup's right there, but the nepotism is too much because we know why that's there. It's Brad Sweet Kyle's little gig there, so they're obviously going to have it. Regardless, I don't really see too many openings or schedules where the Outlaws have much to gain to go run a high-limit race versus the high-limits that are going to try to, I would say, and, and we kind of got a taste of it at Volusia, they're going to campaign off of their success or performances in the outlaw regions because they're trying to solidify themselves as a true national series with national talent. And to do that, you got to go and beat the guy who is currently sitting on the throne of the sport, and that's the outlaws, and they have forever. So it's a part, in my opinion, it's a part of their marketing campaign to go to these outlaw races with the high limit banner on their guys and perform well. Now, the funny spin on that is as I was watching this race, I was watching Jacob Allen swapping it up with Peck, swapping it up with Courtney, and I turned to my buddy and I said, you know, I've said over the years that you could take a mid-pack guy with the World of Outlaws and throw him into the All-Stars and he would dominate the series and potentially be the champion because he's used to running against David Gravel, Donnie Schott, Sheldon, uh, uh, you know, n name the list, Logan, the, 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 I mean, I think we all still kind of agree. The, the, that's a pretty, th those names right there are pretty damn stout. And there's even a few more that I'm, I'm kind of slipping them, you know, say Gio, but he's kind of a, a recent addition. A couple other guys, just recent additions that are very fast, but I'm talking about over a long period of time, you've had to go up against a very heavy hitting 
top five, six cars in the World of Outlaws series. Whereas if you're used to running sixth or seventh against those guys and maybe a fifth or a fourth every now and then and maybe picking up a win like a Jacob Allen did, you could the, 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 the gap between the Outlaws and the old All-Stars was so much that you could take a five, sixth place car in the, in the Outlaws, throw them in the, in the All-Stars, and he'd win the damn race. Like I said, I would think potentially win the championship. And obviously, High Limit Racing is kind of like the All-Stars plus two, you know, Marks and Rico. And then you would say Sweet and, 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 and Larson, but how much is their success really representing what High Limit can do. It's Brad Sweet and Kyle freaking Larson, although Kyle can't make... I was going to say, where'd the parents go? Because they, they they can't show up anymore. For some odd reason, for some odd reason, they're not out there dominating their own series. For some odd reason, Brad Sweet can go to Volusia and look like a superstar that's never lost a step, but now, when it's his own races, he's where you at. But regardless, regardless, I see a result like this, where Jacob Allen puts it on Justin Peck and Tyler Courtney's ass as the dominance... And the respect and the ability and the, the high level quality of performing driving talent that the outlaws do. When I see this victory right here by Jacob Allen, this solidifies, in my opinion, world of outlaw dominance on the high limit racing series. Because you're taking a fourth to sixth place driver from the outlaws and you just put it on two of the best high limit all star drivers asses. That's what I see here. To me, this performance by Jacob Allen and future performances up front by Jacob Allen says to me, well, if you threw in the other three or four guys from the Outlaws, they'd finish ahead of him just like they did the majority of his racing career the last few years. So it's very interesting how they pull a few Outlaw guys over and they think that it's going to make their roster better. But if you look at it from the perspective of what I've been talking about for years, you know, because I saw a couple years ago Craig Kinzer get hated on and other drivers get hated on. Like, if you pulled these guys from the Outlaws full-time, they would do some pretty big damage on the All-Star Tours. They would do some damage on these lower-tiered series because they're used to that David Gravel, Macedo, Shots, Hot and Child, Shoe Hart level of speed. And when you get out of that stream, like the title says, this is just shark bait for these people. This is easy, easy money. Now, Jacob Allen, obviously, do I think he's going to dominate? Guy, I, and I have a lot of respect and think that Justin Peck and Tyler Courtney's are amazing drivers. Marks and Rico, obviously, the, the records stay true. Do I think Jacob Allen's just going to put it on Peck and Courtney every week? Of the, and I, no, I don't. But I think the reason we were watching Jacob Allen out front today, and some people were like, oh, well, Courtney and Peck's about to come up there and just blow by him. He's make the mis- He made a mistake there. He made a mistake there. He's about to get dusted. We're used to seeing Jacob Allen against outlaws. We're used to you were we're used to Jacob Allen when he makes a mistake or a bobble in the three and four. It ain't Justin Peck and Tyler Courtney around him. It's David Gravel and Macedo and Shots and Shoehart. And when you make a mistake with those guys, you get dusted. And that's kind of that gap, I think, that is still there. And Jacob Allen is proving that is still there between the high limit racing series and the world of outlaws. That's what I see personally. Personal. Now there was something that was supposed to stop that from happening, and and that is uh, this results column. Let, let's look at this results column just a little bit closely here. So you got Jacob Allen, Tyler Courtney, Justin Peck, Rico Abreu with the great drive. He did do a great drive, eight to fourth. There wasn't a lot of passing. The late mile race was just unbelievably amazing. Three, two, side by side racing. A little different with, with, when you put the wings on. And then you get down here to uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So Brad Sweet went from seventh to sixth, one of the most dominating sprint car drivers in the last five years. All of a sudden, in the World of Outlaw races at Volusia, he can look like a superstar that never lost a beat. He gets here, can't move up, but maybe one spot. And then you got Brett Marks, who who's started fifth, finished seventh. Okay, well, it ain't PA, so now all the doubters of Brett Marks are like, yep, see, we told you so. And then you got Kyle Larson from 12th to 8th in the Paul Silva 57. How does that happen, Matt? Oh, I don't, I, how did, we, we got a live audience, by the way. How does that, where, where, where did the parents go? Where did the parents go? You're going to tell me that all of a sudden, 
Brad Sweet and them can't figure new tracks out. Kyle Larson, the greatest of all time with Paul Silva, and oh my God, can barely get into the top 10 from 12th. From 12th. And hold on, let's see. Did that make him hard charger? Wait, wait, wait. That's a plus five spots. Let's see how much passing was here. I think that made him hard charger of the race, by the way. Plus five spots. Oh, no, it looks like Corey Elias in 24th to 19th might have topped him. Which, once again, I don't know how Corey, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be a hater, but great person, but results column don't lie. Regardless. What's happening here? Are the parents, the pa- are, are the parents of the situation letting the kids win the game? Matt, you know what I'm talking about when you're, you're playing with your kids and you know you could beat them in basketball when they're three and four years old, you know, but you want them to feel like they're good. And you, so you let them win the basketball game so they feel like they're doing something. And, and they look better against their friends. Oh, he beat his dad playing the basketball game. And they're trying to give him a chance. And Matt made a good point. He said, you know, Chess, you know, these football players and basketball players, they, you see them playing really hard. Really, really hard. And then they get that check. They sign that big contract. And all of a sudden, their toe hurts, and we gotta get we gotta rest up. And you see him back off the throttle a little bit. We see him lose a little little speed in the gumpture department. And obviously, if we're talking about you know, we saw the 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 campaign that the High Limit Series did with the Outlaws in Volusia to make High Limit look better, and Brad Sweet looked like a superstar against the Outlaws. Obviously, if that's for an image perspective of their series in the roster, the image and perspective of their series in the roster wouldn't look too good if Kyle and, 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 and Brad just started dominating every race as well. That would ruin their per- respect. That would ruin their per- uh, perspective and their stars that they're trying to sell. So, I don't know. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Where did, where did, where did the parents go? And this is another point that I want to make to you, some, and I got to get a little bigger here. This is what I'm fucking talking about. When y'all, when y'all Kyle Larson, Larson Knight, son of a bitches, you come the fuck out, and, and when he wins, if he would have won the race tonight or last week whatever, or other day, you would have saw all over Facebook, greatest of all time, who's better, who could do it all, you would have saw NASCAR.com, Kyle Larson race wins big first ever race at Golden Isle, oh my fucking God, he just fucking whacked all the dicks there ever was. Y'all are just like, oh my God, he wins a race. All right, well, let's just sit here and say that they're not putting, you know, harder tires on the car and, you know, the the restricted mufflers and the the nozzles to tune the car down so he's got 25 less horsepower so everybody else can win or something. Let's just say he's got a full-blown, he's going out there, they're all trying to win here. Okay, then. Okay, because I don't believe that. I think Kyle's really good. I think he's better than eighth. I just think that. Honestly, maybe if it was a Phil Dietz 41... Or maybe a Cody Jacobs number two car. I think Kyle could do a little better personally because I think they're a little bit better uh, car team, you know, on uh, combos there. I think the 41 Phil Dietz machine is, is one of the best uh, sprint cars in the world just based on going from gravel to Macedo. And Macedo was so bad in the two car for Larson, but once he got in the 41, just bam, it was like the 41 never changed between gravel and Macedo. So I, that's proof for me that, that whatever Phil Dietz in that 41 does is, is amazing. Maybe, maybe Kyle needs to think about switching cars here. But once again... Let's just say that that's not the case. Let's just say that the God of Paul and Kyle are are trying to win these high limit races. Okay, so where are all you fucking Larson Knight people now? Are we going to see NASCAR.com tomorrow? And this is my bigger issue because they use it to manipulate society because NASCAR's got the only avenue to society, which is broadcast television and all these outlets. They've manipulated, indoctrinated people in America for years now. Are they going to have a headline come out tomorrow that says, Kyle Larson struggles to get a top 10. Wow. There are seven other sprint car dirt racers better than Kyle Larson the last couple of days because I think he finished just as bad the other other night on Thursday. So where are you people at? He's getting his ass handed to him, got his ass handed to him in the late miles. Oh, the dirt world is dominating Kyle. Y'all ain't going to say that, are you? Nope, you're going to say the car was off. This is why you go read that Larson night shirt I made. The only way Kyle can lose a race, that's one of the definitions, is if 
his car is off. Not that another driver could be better. Not that one of these hitters in these sprint cars or late models are better drivers. No, it's not possible for you people. You can't believe that. It's, it's out of your mind. <laughs> it's not reality for you. You can't, you can't understand how this is reality. That Kyle's where he's at in life based on opportunity, not just superior driver talent than everyone else in the world. He's really damn good up there in NASCAR, and he could win the Indy 500 because those guys are really bad up there, in my opinion. Don't, fucking talent level's horrible. We did, we did all see Kyle Busch getting a super late mile last year and need a provisional and still got lapped twice, right? Those guys up there are just so much of a paper champion that when you bring somebody who's half-assed with the, with the right hook, he's going to knock all of them out like Kyle's been doing. And, and Chris Bell as well. I'd throw him in there. But once again, on asphalt, the car determines your finishing position. You... You can, your talent can really be sn- uh, snuffed, you know, muffed. Look at look at Kyle in the 42 car in Chip Ganassi. Six wins in six years. They thought he wasn't good enough to be a NASCAR driver. He gets in a decent car, dominates the year, wins a championship. So the cars over there could control how good you actually are. But I still think Kyle's a superior race talent to everyone over there. When you throw him into the dirt world, I think there's way more hard hitters over here in this dirt world that can put it on Kyle. And I think this, the dirt racing sport in general needs to recognize that so we project ourselves as potentially having the deeper roster. Just how High Limit wants to try to project that High Limit potentially has a harder-hitting roster than the World of Outlaws this year. Dirt racing in general needs to start representing to the world how we may be have the hardest fucking hitter in rosters than all of y'all, than all of than F1, than NASCAR, than everything. Because, I mean, we got some results that kind of prove it, right? Especially if the world's considering Kyle Larson one of the greatest racing talents there ever has been. We're over here knocking his ass out every single night in all these cars. There's, there's, your, there's, there's how I would campaign it. Y'all, y'all at High Limit want to campaign when you run well at Volusia against the Outlaws to show how good you are. Why don't we in the dirt world use this as us slapping Kyle around of how good we are to the world? Ever think of that? No, oh no, no, because you've been raised to believe that Cole Trickle is the greatest of all time. Can't handle. I just can't. I got. I got to stop now. I'm getting red in the face. This is getting unsafe. It's humid. It's hot here. They don't use the AC in Australia. They just don't use it. Um, there was an interesting scenario because the crowd was a little light on Thursday at Golden Isle, and then you had John Horn share this photo from Southern Raceway. Southern Raceway. I've actually been there. I believe it's just outside of Pensacola, Florida. I, be, I believe Milton, Florida, is where it's located. Uh, and I went there for a USCS race uh, a couple years ago, and it was absolutely full. And it was USCS and crates. This is about, I, I, don't don't get mad at me if I'm wrong. I would say this is about four or five hours from Golden Isle, potentially. Maybe it's closer. Maybe it's closer. But their stands were full for USCS and crate late model races. Obviously, if you notice, that guy didn't care about the dice roll because he's a late model fan. All the fans that you saw there tonight for Lucas Oil late model fans because... Their fan base, you know, they're not manipulated and think one NASCAR guy. They don't care about Tyler Reddick. They're there to see their superstars. Regardless, this was very interesting. There was a lot of complaints about the ticket prices to go now, I believe, 55 or 60 or something like that. Uh, a lot of people were saying that it's justified. I think it's justified. Although, being over here in Australia, I've got to see how respect for dirt racing is just another level over here. The class level is a little higher for uh, dirt racing in Australia, so you could charge a little bit more to get in. Whereas in the Americas, it seems like a really good excuse to get drunk on a Friday, Saturday night, and that's kind of all it is. But not for everyone, but that seems to be more so the case. And and I think that you could do a higher ticket price in a more respected class society. But since we're not projected to normal world, like NASCAR or regular people, white collars, as a respected form where the rednecks driving in circles just trying to maybe get to NASCAR one day, we can't charge that much. Uh, we're not respected. We're not viewed as professional. We're D League, G League. We're we're the thing that nobody. We're the we're, we're the Robins. We're not the Batman. Batman gets the high ticket prices. Robins, who the hell are you? You got to give them away. But it it kind of played a factor this weekend when you had USCS 360 sprint cars, guys. A uh, very not even a heavy hitting 360 sprint car region with crate late models, just crates 604s. Pull a bigger crowd than Kyle Larson, than Jonathan Davenport, than Ricky Thornton Jr., than all of them. All of them pulled a bigger crowd. Now, is this because of location? Some are saying, like like I was just explaining, ticket price. This wasn't $60 to get in. You could have saved money just staying around. Maybe 
and, and, and obviously Pensacola, that area of, of Florida, has a lot of racing fans, asphalt and dirt. Like I said, I went there for a USCS race like four years ago, and it was just as full for just USCS, normal. Not even a Speed Week style. I believe it was in May or June or something. Just There was an abundance of race fans at the facility. And Golden Isle, traditionally, I haven't ever really seen a big crowd at Golden Isle. Like, ever. I ain't ever really, I mean, maybe there has been one, so don't, like, make me feel like shit if, if there has been one and you're going to show me a picture from 2018 or something. But I remember the last couple years, the Bronsons having a big issue getting a damn crowd for the Super Bowl of dirt racing. That they used to have every year with the late model crowds, with the with the or with the late model industry. I remember them having big issues trying to get people in the stands. Some people were blaming weather, and maybe you can, but I see cold events where people are, dra- are draped out and they're all there. They're never all there for Golden Isle. I I haven't seen Golden Isle just be wham, slam packed like we've seen East Bay or Volusia or. Or or it or even a Southern Raceway here or Port Royal. I'm just saying I've never seen it slam packed jammed full. So location could play a big factor as to why all these people are here. And maybe if this race here at Southern Raceway wasn't happening, you would be able to get some of that Pensacola fan base or these fan bases to go all the way over to to go now. But it's hard. It's all crapshoot. Like I said, I think it's four or five hours from this facility. I could be wrong. Once again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's less. But once again. Location is a big situation. Maybe ticket prices are a little too high, but once again, I feel like if society around us respected us, you know, society around us pays $75 to fucking park at a football game. Society around us is paying $20,000 to watch Taylor fucking Swift. Society around us is spending like 300 bucks on some drinks and a dinner with some girl they swipe right right, right on with the tender. So we just don't have respect of society. And that's what I've tried to talk about and explain to you and break down. You just don't care. Cal is the leader and savior of the world. Not your respect. Not what people project. Not how people view you. Your representation to the world. Is what's going to determine on if you're worth 60 bucks to get in or not. What do they view you as? Do they view you as a prize fighting champion or just some low scum triple A minor league bum? Because America will pay uh, $75 to park to watch the NFL, but we won't even pay 30 bucks to get in and watch an XFL game or a USFL game. If you're not deemed the best in the world, we don't give a fuck about you. That's how we are. We love number ones. And right now, in my opinion, like I've been saying here for five fucking years now, and you won't listen, dirt racing is being misrepresented as a bunch of, you know, low scum, couldn't make it to NASCAR guys who are just AAA minor league talents when you're not. It's a monetary factor. The biggest scam in sports history, because in all these other stick and ball sports, if you're the best talent wise, you advance. And over here in the dirt and, the, and even in the asphalt world, if you're not the best talent-wise, it don't matter. You just buy your way to the next level. You just buy your way to the starting lineup. And then marketing groups and people and media, they manipulate society and project you as you're better than you actually are. And then at the same time, project, project us as not as good, even though we are. So, been saying this for a long time. Respect is the number one key as to why potentially... Southern Raceway is full for a little lesser of a show. I would say USCS and Crate is a little lesser of, the sh- of a show. And why Golden Isle ain't fucking building grandstands to hold more people because a show like you just saw at Golden Isle and the talent and the and the ability that you saw at that facility is, is bigger than any motorsport in the world. In the fucking world. And you can't get... 10,000 people. You, you, should, you should be rejecting people from coming to go to Nile. That's, and the, and what, that's the point, and the reason you're not is because of what I'm talking about, buddy. And until you get the, that through your head, you're just fucked anyway. Or maybe y'all are working within the system and y'all already know that, and you're just projecting the entity that you work for. Regardless. Just, uh... 
having a badass coffee here today. I am woke the fuck up, and hopefully you are too. Not just woke, I'm aware. You know, I was making a really good joke the other day. Really damn good joke. And it's not even a joke. You know, some girl here in uh, Gold Coast was like, oh yeah, I'm woke. Oh yeah, I'm woke. Like, okay, I've been woke too. You wake up and you, you start recognizing the business infrastructures and you're like, oh my God, I've been lied to my entire life and you want to say and do something about, it. okay, you're woke. You, you figured out how the system is operating and now you can't live with life. And you want to scream and shout and protest and, and all this stuff. Okay, you got you to gotta get to a point where you're aware of it. You know, you, you got to upgrade yourself from a, uh, being woke to being aware. And then once you become aware you, you, you are able to go forward in life now aware of how everything operates so that you're not just a black or a white sheep. You can elevate your mind status. It's very simple. It's very interesting, very simple to actually do. Uh, but anyways, I was going to talk about uh, flow racing and, and, and there's some people saying that, you know, flow, actually we'll bring it up. They're saying that that, that flow is, 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 the high limit broadcast is not, up to to snuff or whatever. I really don't think that's the case. Look at the dice the dice throw situation tonight. Look, not everyone in America can be seven plus. Seven plus night thunder is just next level. Dirt vision. I, I swear to you guys, if you put dirt vision in these broadcasts that flow put out with high limit next to one another, you wouldn't tell much of a difference outside of the little plushy driver intro deals. I do think it's weird. They need to, and I had, I was doing this for other companies when I was involved with the broadcast teams. When you make these little downtime like videos, you got to kind of make downtime videos that are different, you know, because I don't know how many times we saw t shirts just waving in the air and no one, like, what is going on here and like um, drivers' meetings, like slow mos. You got to kind of make like mediocre, like through the night things that you sprinkle throughout different little ins and outs. There is some extracurricular activity that could be done and made, but. I really don't think it's that much different than Dirt Vision. I really don't think it's that much different. I think Chase Rodman's doing well. I think one of the biggest issues in the sprint car racing world with announcing, though, you look at 7 Plus at Perth, probably the best announcer core group television production there is in motorsports for dirt track racing in particular. And none of the announcers are selfish. There's there's more so storytelling than play-by-playing. And there's, they, they, it's a conglomeration, con- conglomeration with this entire experience of an event. And I would say the late model industry, like James Essex and, and everybody and how they operate and talk and kind of carry the night throughout, the late model industry is, is, is closer to that. And I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, and this was actually brought up by somebody else and, and, and agreed upon with a big group of people. The Johnny Gibson style just doesn't really work for a great production. It doesn't work with one guy being bigger than everything else. And Johnny Gibson, as badass as he is, he is pretty damn big. I mean, you if you lost Johnny Gibson, I was saying it, you know, when High Limit didn't have an announcer, if, if High Limit could take Johnny Gibson, they just took the World of Outlaws. You know, because Johnny Gibson, his announcing style and how he does it, it's almost part of the circus that they have with the World of Outlaws. And if you take that away... The presenter is gone. And I don't think you're going to beat Johnny Gibson and how he does it and what he does. I don't think you're going to beat him. But I think you can evolve above that style of pr- producing a or or announcing or presenting a sprint car event and a, and a race call. Like how the late model guys do. I think how Essex does it and all these other guys with a mixture uh, and, and the flow racing night in America's and all this stuff that the late model industry does. Is, is, is a better presentating way to call races and is more eventful, more storytelling, more like the 7 Plus, more going to be closer to your network television broadcast style. I mean, what is it? NASCAR's got three announcers. All the other guys, they have multiple announcers. It's not just one gung-ho guy. And I get that that's the, the Johnny Gibson, Gibson standard and the dirt track standard because a lot of weekly and regional racing series can't afford to have more than one guy, you know? So I get that that's standard of dirt racing because of the affordability of only having one announcer. Hell, they're having a problem paying flagmen nowadays, so they're just going digital anyway. So I get it that that every dirt racing world is struggling and and tracks and fans and all that back to the hardcore issues that I've been standing up for because I believe it's the foundation to all the problem is the respect of the sport, and that's why you're not getting anyone, not getting paid. But regardless, I just think that that one guy style 
Like even having the late model guys in there just chumming it up with 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 Chase tonight made it a little better, made it a little more uh, listenable, made it a little bit more storytelling, made it a little bit more just entertaining. Entertainment value overall was just a little bit better. And like I said, the seven plus Perth situation is is beautiful. Even the announcer conglomeration, how they do it, is just awesome. Um, I, I think that the late bottle world, the Lucas Oil side, especially with flow and how they mix things up, is second place to that. Just speaking dirt racing industry, I would then put Gibson in the outlaw sprint car because I don't think you could get better than Gibson. One guy, I don't think you can get one guy, Rocky or Rambo and his, his, you know, just gung ho and like Johnny Gibson does. I don't think you could get better than that. I think that's the pinnacle and I think that's kind of the, the old way of doing it too. I think that that style. That presentation style is the old... I think Johnny Gibson's going to be like the ACDC or something. It's like the last great rock and roll band. And you have to kind of work around it, do something different. But anyway, I just see a lot of hate towards Chase. And I know I made a post the other day about uh, Dean, which I was talking about Dean Gertie, because Dean Gertie's a very horrible individual. He was messaging me, oh, you need to go and, and hit Brad up. You need to be. You need to try to make sure you're... You're involved with High Limit. They need you. Chaz could save the world for them. They're they're horrible. This is blah, 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 blah. I, and when I made the post, I made the joke post. Where is it at? I made the joke post. Right here. James Dean says High Limit and Flo needs me to save their, their broadcast this season. The right guy for hype. I just wanted to reiterate, and I had to in the comments because they were all like, chase this, chase that. It's like, it's not chase. It's not chase. Where's the head coaching? Where's the, where's the, where's the, Where's the, funny enough, funny enough in this, down here, when we were talking about 7 Plus and, and Perth, you got the producer, I believe, of 7 Plus right there, Dean Nill, said that a lot could be said. A lot could be said. And see, a Dean Nill is very important to 7 Plus because he's the coach of it. Like, he's the one who has it. You got to have a coach. You got to have this guy who has an idea of how it should be projected, how it should be pushed, how it should look, how it should sound. And then you go out there and you run the play. You go over here, all right, you're going to go here, you're going to do this, bam. And then everybody runs the play. And if it's all coordinated and done correctly, you got a great damn finishing product. You got a, you got a touchdown. You know? that that And and I think that's what is, uh, and even Dustin Miller, the production is a bit lacking. There's a lot of elements to this when they say production and all this stuff that I think they don't understand that they're talking about. Because it's not just production. It's not just announcer. It's not just a videographer. It's a full-blown package that has to work together in unison and has to be very selfless. I do think that's one of the issues and differences between a 7 Plus and a Perth and anything in the United States is ego, man. I'm telling you, over here in Australia, it's not about the money most of the time. It's about the love of the sport. And over in America... It's about that ego. It's about that money. It's about being the king shit fucking Rocky Balboa. I'm the, I'm the guy. I'm the save the world guy. I'm, I'm, it's, it's all ego. And those egos don't like to play together well. Now, once again, the late models, not as much. Not as much. But the sprint car world is, is egotistically really warped, I think, mentally. Mentally warped in the egotistical uh, category of the situation. But regardless, that's just what I think. Doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean it's right. It's just it's just what some fat guy in, uh, from Texas in Australia on YouTube thinks. Okay, that's all. That's all. That's all. Um, but anyway, do we have any questions? Do we have any comments? Is is that it, Matt? Matt's going outside. He can't handle me no more. Is that bad? Oh, he's getting some fresh air. I filled the place up with hot air. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay. You son of a bitch. All right. Oh God. Let's see what we got here. Oh. We, get, we do have comments, I believe. There's got to be comments after all the shit I just talked. Oh, my God. I agree with you on announcing Dirt Late Model has it right. Somebody says you are right about Gibson. I, I, I think I am right about Gibson. What do you think, Matt? Gibson is the pinnacle. He's the pinnacle, but I, I don't think you're going to beat that guy. You got to do it another way. You got to do it another way. Matt's really shit scared. He's shy. He don't want to be banned from racetracks in Australia. But anyway. Matt's a good uh, a friend with everybody. He, he he just likes watching. There's a lot of y'all out there who are like, I would never act like this guy. But you love watching it. That's Matt. That's Matt. You know, and there's a lot of people out there who say and think like I do. They're just scared of that camera, you know, because the repercussions that come with it, you know, <laughs> repercussions that come with it. I'm just sitting here thinking, how is Sprint Car fan going to gonna react to Sydney? Three days ago, he was against it. Now he's loving it. If I was dating him, I'd be like, holy shit, this guy swings emotions fast. I'd be scared to death. 
Uh, I don't believe Thursday or Friday was 60. I think it was only the a combined show tonight. Um, no, yeah, exactly. I didn't say that, did I? Because Thursday was empty and it was cheaper. Oh, Jason Crow said, yeah, I've never recovered from being around me. Wow. Matt's feeling, Matt's feeling the uh, layover right now. Southern Raceway is absolute junk. Racing in sand, no thanks. Right, it is. But the people there recently, or regionally, they love it. Uh, Colt Snyder says, ASA Super Late Malls on floor are pretty entertaining. I like the pavement sprints too. Okay, yeah, and, and, and see Southern Raceway, I believe is in Milton. Right there, Pensacola, isn't it? Five Flags. I'm not an asphalt connoisseur. I know a little bit about it. I believe it's Five Flags has the big snowball derby down there. So it's a big racing town. So even though Southern Raceway is drunk or junk, it it's still, well, funny enough, the racing fans down there are drunk on racing. So it doesn't really matter if Southern Raceway is a junk racetrack. The fans there support the sport. They have respect for motorsports in that little circle, just like Pennsylvania. I think that's why it flourishes so well. They don't give a fuck about NASCAR over there. They care about their local racers. They respect the local sprint car driver, the Dietrichs, the Ramers, the soon-to-be Williamsons, hopefully, you know, the, the Devin Bordens, whoever's kicking ass in Pennsylvania, they respect them. And there's a lot of people who respect motorsports there, so they can pack a place out relatively easily. Everybody was on the sweet Larson bandwagon bitching. They were going to steal all the moolah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Did Sweet and Larson, you know, put the old, uh, the smogger down nozzles on the car? Did they put the mufflers on there that restrict horsepower? Did they purposefully, and once again, back to uh, facts are boring, speculation is fun. You know that one, Matt? You remember me saying that? Facts are boring, speculation is fun. If I was to speculate... I was to get my little cup beer and stir it up by the six hundred dollar espresso machine coffee here. You know, with my little uh, sugar cubes from what? What kind of tree is that? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. I got sure. That's why I'm going crazy. If I, if I, if somebody tries to sue me for my, um, my, my little speculation here, I'm gonna blame I was temporarily uh, contaminated with Sri Lanka sugar with this shit. I was poisoned. The reason I'm about to give this. Please don't sue me, Kyle, and all these fucking rich pricks who don't like the truth. I was poisoned by a shlerinka. What the hell is this? I don't even know. Some tree out there in the woods. So I was poisoned for my speculation here, but I would speculate to horse. Wait, I'm losing my... I don't even know how to speak correctly. Speculate to horse. Speculate to... If I'm going to speculate to on the show today. Speculate to... Yeah, it's got the it's got the language on there. Oh God, wait, that's Arabic. They're gonna kill me. Um, I would say that potentially that there is some uh, detuning of certain race cars so that other race cars look better than they are, so it gives credibility to, to the entire roster. That's what I would say. That's what I, I was mentioning at you, Larson people earlier about. Well, if Larson runs eighth and he's the greatest of all time, what about the seven other guys? Or or option. They're detuning those cars so that the other guys look better than they actually are because just a few weeks ago, Brad Sweet just fucking put it on the World of Outlaws. Like, not, didn't miss a step. Brad Sweet's known for going to a track he's never been before and succeeding. Yeah, it took him forever to win in PA. That's because they're really good up there. But still, just saying, just saying. If I speculate, I would say that those cars are not running as... Hummerist, or maybe, like I said, I do think Kyle would do better in a in a Phil Dietz forty one, or a Cody Jacobs squaring operation. I I do I don't know I don't I do not think that fifty seven is that great. I think Kyle's that great. Shane Stewart I thought was really good in the fifty seven, but I mean, Paul Silva. I, mean, I want to talk about Rico and and all these people. I mean, Paul Silva kicked Rico out of his car last year. Was that Rico's fault? Obviously, when Rico gets Ricky Warner. He's a bad son of a bitch. He was in the 57, I think it was this time last year or two years ago. Rico went to the 57 and ran some local regional California races. Couldn't hit his ass. They fired him. Said he wanted to sell t-shirts more than win races. Really? So who's good there? Who's bad there? Justin Sanders got into the silver 57. Oh, but because there's nepotism, monarchy, Corey Days and all this stuff, you kick him out after he dominates in your car. So there's some guys that can carry that 57, but if it's just a regular guy in there, you can't carry it. I mean, you, Paul's getting exposed, in my opinion. 
So maybe maybe Larson needs to get into someone else's car here in these upcoming high limit races to resolidify his greatest of all time dominance. Maybe that's what need, needs to happen. Is that what needs to happen? Does does Kyle need to get in someone else's car? Get him in a Roth car. Yeah, put him in the eighty three. Let's say James McFadden and Ross freaking spot. Yeah, put him in the eighty three. I guarantee you, Dennis Roth won't be against that idea, would you? Imagine how many Kyle Larson shirts you could sell with another car on it. It's not just the same old white 57 anymore. Uh, Kyle Larson 2024 Dennis Roth collaboration t-shirt. Oh my God, open the gates. Floodgates of every merchandise sale you could have. And that's all they care about anyway now. that's They showed merchandise for four hours tonight, didn't they? Yeah. Coming home. He's coming home. California team. I don't know why we, I don't know why y'all ain't doing that. Colt Snyder says, Chaz, you aren't good enough to be a YouTuber. Oh my. Oh my. Is Rico detuning? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody can be at Gibson Le- Gibson's level. He's been calling a long time. Let's go back a little bit more. Somebody said, yeah, that's it. They are throwing races. This dude's lost it. See, they don't understand how marketing works. They really don't understand how marketing works. Now Chaz is jealous and angry because I just said that. What am I jealous and angry about exactly? I'm jealous and angry being in Australia? Having a time in my life going to races? What am I jealous and angry about, man? What is there to be jealous and angry about? Does it sound jealous and angry? No, it's... Uh, speculation. It's the fucking... What is this shit called? This did it to me, guys. I'm poisoned. That's all it is. Jacob just outran the field. I, I agree. I agree that Jacob outran the field, but that just shows you how good the world of outlaws are. Jacob Allen's a fourth to sixth place outlaw driver who's jumped in the high limit and instantly kicked their little all-star plus two ass. Or plus four. Is it plus two or plus four? It's, it's plus two... Without Brad, I would say plus two with Rico and Marks, and then plus four with Rico, Marks, Sweet, and Larson. So is it All Stars plus two or plus four? Regardless, it's fourth to sixth place, place driver there in Jacob Allen that is looking pretty damn snippy and put it on some high limit hitters' ass tonight. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. Jacob will do well in in high limit. It's 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 in his uh, talent bracket. It's a it's a step down. It's it's away from gravel. It's away from Shuhart. It's away from Macedo. It's away from shots. It's away from Sheldon. It's away from Selzy. It's away from these guys. Somebody said, "Is that the N word guy?" No, my name is not Kyle. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we, we there's pretty much nothing to talk about now. Once again, Sydney and everything that's happening. Uh, that'll be very interesting to see how that works out here in the next couple weeks. I believe Dubbo is the next race I'm going to potentially 10 hours away. I don't know, though. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Which one is it? I don't know. Which one is it? Second is Dubbo? And then ninth is Lismore or practice or something. We don't know about the New Zealand stuff yet. We'll see. We don't know about the New Zealand stuff just yet. We'll see. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully everybody enjoyed the show, the thoughts, the ideas, the freedom of speech uh, that the American projected tonight or today. It's it's three o'clock p.m. Eastern here currently, uh, but anyways, it'll be interesting. Uh, Twenty four hours to come. What is what is the world of outlaws going to do? Are they going to send a check to Jacob? Thank him for showing how good they are. I think that's what he should. I think that's what they should do. You took a mid-pack outlaw guy and sent him to high limit, and he's slapping him around. That's showing him how good that 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 that, that outlaw roster actually is. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, anyways. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Links in the description to, do, to join the support. Um, we'll, we'll probably be here a couple of nights this week, right? Yeah, throwing some stuff out there. Uh, keep up with the Snapchat. If you want to really enjoy some things and you want to hear some N-word, guys, Go to the Snapchat. Oh, I was sending it out to Sydney last night. Or uh, what was it? What was it called? Where are we? Surfer's Paradise. Yeah, we went to Surfer's Paradise last night. I, I I didn't mean to cock block him, but I'm just too fat to carry the load that Matt's bringing with us. You know, he he was bringing in the ladies all night. 
all the friends were wanting him and I was this guy off to the side and it was just, it was awkward, you know, it was awkward. The fat guys don't get no love here. I'm up against Thor's, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody looks like Thor in Australia. I'm fucked. But anyway, um, it was awesome. My Snapchat, Chaz T7Z. Chaz T7Z. Check it out, the Snapchat. You want to get on there. The stories have been amazing. Uh, we also interacted with V8 Supercars and Carlton Dry. Hold on. We got a new new show sponsor. Carlton Dry has jumped on board with the Great Northern. The Great Northern. Me and me and Carlton Dry, Dry exchanged some uh, ticky talks yesterday with uh, Brody Kostecki. We watched the late or the uh, Camaros and Mustangs battle in Australia. That doesn't make sense to me. They're on right now? We're going to go watch some V8 Supercars. Uh, but be sure to join in on the Snapchat, TikToks, all that, long live the Chaz. But Snapchat, Chaz T7Z, it has been very entertaining on the Snapchat interactions. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. Congratulations to Jacob Allard on the win. Congratulations to, to Mike Marler. Notice I didn't criticize late mile racing. They ain't doing nothing wrong. Everything's hitting on all cylinders over there. You got Michael Rigsby telling the world how he believes dirt late mile drivers are the best racers in the world. Don't care if you're not. They just come out and say it. Well, we're over here protecting them. We're over here protecting them. We're over here letting Cole Trickle run the sport. Anyways, anyways. Thanks for tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm drugged up on some sugar tree. Um, Is there some response? We got a comment, a live comment. What is this? Oh, he wants me to... Everybody needs to know that Shane Van Gisbergen finished third in the Xfinity Series at Atlanta today. They are very excited about their SVG in NASCAR. We would get Cam Waters. Did Ryan Newton win in Cam Waters' car? He didn't win. Oh, he didn't start the... But he won. Would the car break? Something broke. No, they gave him the call and said, hey, you better not win in that fucking car. I can't water's car is one of the best sprint cars in Australia, but he ain't got the ta- he ain't got the dirt. He ain't got the talent. It's, it's, it's so he's a Kyle Bush. He ain't got the talent. He could run asphalt, but he ain't got the dirt track talent to keep up on the dirt track with these boys. That's why Cam Waters ain't won yet. He ain't got the talent. It ain't experience. No. He just ain't got the speed, man. He ain't got the skill. Just, they're in V8 supercars because they bought their way there. The same politics and, and ways you get to NASCAR Cup Series racing. It ain't because you're better in America. It's because you had the money and, and ability and opportunity. Whereas the talent is in the dirt world. And you can't just come in like a Cam Waters and win dirt races because the best drivers in your country are in dirt, are sprint cars. Well, the best drivers in y'all's country are probably in modified sedans. But anyway, anyways, congratulations, SVG, on your thir- or third place against the rich kids of America in Xfinity. Such an accomplishment. I don't know how to handle it. If he would, if he would have won a damn street stock race it, it, at Pensacola, I would have been more impressed. But anyways, anyways. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody says they love the hat. Fisher, body parts. No, I'm just playing. Um, Fisher, let's see, what is it? Fisher Oval Track Racing. It's a Queensland team. They gave me a hat. I lost both my hats in Perth. I lost my shades. I lost my selfie stick. All of it's gone. Um, and, and we are over here in Queensland, the Gold Coast, enjoying our time. But anyways, more content to come outside of just these talking shows. So be sure you subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Comment below. Share it around. If you want to become a member, there is a button down there. It helps out a lot. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time here on the show. Go, go listen to the new song, uh, Broke Down. We just put that out recently here as well. It's also available on all your major music streaming platforms. Just search The Chaz, and you can find them today. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you later. We can ride high, we can ride low. We can ride As long as we make the show, we can be the best.